Good morning friends. Today I am going to discuss a very beautiful problem of wedge constant relation. We are going to find out the acceleration of the wedge using the concept of Newton's laws of motion. As you can see in this problem, a rod rests on a wedge and the motion of the rod A is restricted along this direction with the help of two rigid supports. All the surfaces are frictionless so there is no dissipative forces acting on the body. We have to find out the acceleration of wedge B. Now let us draw the free body diagram of this problem. I have drawn the free body diagram of uh, rod A and wedge B. As you can see for rod A the forces acting on the rod are mg and the normal reaction for force from the surface of the wedge. Now since if the system is released then the rod moves in the vertical direction since its motion is restricted along the horizontal direction. So let us say small a be the acceleration of the rod along the vertical direction. So the forces acting along the vertical direction are mg and the component of normal force along the vertical direction is m cos theta. Similarly, for free body diagram of wedge B, if the rod is released, it moves along the vertical direction due to which wedge B is constrained to move along the horizontal direction, along this direction. Let us say big A be the acceleration of wedge along the horizontal direction. Now the forces acting on the wedge along this direction is the component of normal force n sin theta. If this angle is theta, this is the normal force. So the angle that normal force subtends with the horizontal axis is 90 minus theta. So the component of normal force along this direction is n sin theta. And along the vertical direction, it is n cos theta. Now let us find out the forces responsible for producing acceleration on rod A and wedge B. Let us write down the net force acting on the rod along the direction of acceleration. So for rod A, net force along the direction of acceleration is mg minus n cos theta. So we can write mg minus n cos theta equals mass of the rod multiplied by the acceleration. Let it be equation number 1. Similarly, net force on the wedge along the direction of acceleration is for wedge B net force along the direction of acceleration is n sin theta and it is equal to mass of the wedge multiplied by the acceleration. Let this be equation number 2. Now these are the two equations. We can see that we have three unknowns, the normal force, small a the acceleration of the rod along the vertical direction and the bigger a which is the acceleration of the wedge along the horizontal direction. So we have three unknowns but only two equations. We can get third equation from the constraint relation. So let us write down the wedge constraint relation. Now as we can see that due to the vertical motion of the rod which displaces along the horizontal direction. So let x be the displacement of the wedge along the horizontal direction due to y displacement of the rod along the vertical direction. This is x and this is 
y. This angle is theta. So we can find out the relation between x and y. If we consider this triangle, we can say that tan theta tan theta is equal to y upon x or y is equals to x tan theta. So the y displacement of the rod along the vertical direction is equal to x multiplied by tan theta where x is the displacement of the wedge along the horizontal direction. Now if you differentiate this equation twice with respect to time, we get the acceleration. So d2 y upon dt square is equal to d2 x upon dt square into tan theta. d2 y upon dt square is the acceleration of the rod along the vertical direction which is a small a. Therefore a is equal to d2x upon dt square is the acceleration of the wedge along the vertical direction, sorry along the horizontal direction. So it is a tan theta. So this is the relation between the vertical acceleration of rod and the horizontal acceleration of wedge. Let this be equation number 3. Now we have 3 unknowns and 3 equations so we can easily find out acceleration of the wedge. So we have seen that how the motion of the two bodies are related to each other through wedge constant relations. This is the beauty of this equation that shows the dependence of acceleration of the two bodies on each other. Now let us solve these 3 equations, equation number 1, 2 and 3. We can uh, put the value of small a from equation number 3 in equation number 1. From equation 1 and 3, mg minus n cos theta equals to ma tan theta. Now we can take the help of equation number 2, we can replace the normal reaction force by ma upon sin theta. So mg minus ma upon sin theta multiplied by cos theta is equal to ma tan theta. Now we can see that we have only one unknown which is acceleration A of the wedge in this equation. So we can easily find out the acceleration. So taking A common, we can write m cot theta plus m tan theta equals to mg. Therefore, acceleration of the wedge is equal to mg upon m cot theta plus m tan theta or we can write a equals to g upon m upon m cot theta plus tan theta which is the required acceleration of the wedge. So we have seen that we can easily find out the acceleration of the rod and wedge system using the Newton's laws of motion with the help of constant relation. Dear friends, I have already explained how to find the acceleration of the wedge uh, using the concept of Newton's laws of motion. Now I am going to explain a relatively easier method 
to find out the acceleration of the wedge, which is the law of conservation of energy method. This method is relatively easy compared to Newton's laws of motion. Since we know that in Newton's laws of motion, we have to draw the free body diagram, which is a bit tricky. We have to show all the forces acting on the bodies. If we miss any force, we will not get the correct result. So let us find out the acceleration of the wedge using law of conservation of energy. We have already obtained the wedge constant relationship between the two bodies. And the relation between the acceleration of the rod and the horizontal acceleration of the wedge is A equal to A tan theta. Where A is the vertical acceleration of the rod and bigger A is the acceleration of the wedge along the horizontal direction. Let this be question number one. Now since all the surfaces are frictionless, so no dissipative forces are acting on the system, so we can easily apply the law of conservation of mechanical energy. So applying law of conservation of energy, we get mg y is equal to half m v a square plus half m v b square where m is the mass of the rod bigger m is the mass of the wedge v a is the velocity of the rod at any instant and VB is the velocity of the wedge. Now, if you differentiate this equation with respect to time, mg dy upon dt equals half m twice ba into dba upon dt plus half m twice vb into dvb upon dt. dy upon dt is the velocity of the rod at any time t, so it can be replaced by va. Now the right hand side becomes, two to cancels each other, mva, dva upon dt is the acceleration of the rod, which is a, plus Again here 2 to cancels each other on the right hand terms. MVB. DVB upon DT is the acceleration of the wedge which is bigger A. Now we can relate the velocity of the rod with the velocity of the wedge through the wedge constant relation. We know that wedge constant relation for rod and wedge system is y equals x tan theta. If you consider this triangle, tan theta is equal to y upon x. So the displacement, vertical displacement of the rod is related to the horizontal displacement of the wedge. So if you differentiate this equation with respect to time, we get dy upon dt equal to dx upon dt multiplied by tan theta. dy upon dt is the velocity of the rod Va. dx upon dt is the velocity of the wedge Vb multiplied by tan theta. So Va equal to Vb tan theta. This is the relation between the velocity of the rod and the wedge. We have to find out the acceleration of the wedge 
So we'll take the help of these two equations. Let this be equation number two. Now, putting the value of small a from equation one in this equation, and putting the value of v a from equation number two in this equation, we get m g v b tan theta equals m v b tan theta multiplied by a tan theta from equation number one plus m v b multiplied by the acceleration of the wedge. Now we can see that v b on the both sides cancels each other. So the above the this equation reduces to m g tan theta equals m a tan square theta plus m multiplied by the acceleration. Therefore, acceleration of the wedge is equal to mg tan theta upon m tan square theta plus the mass of the wedge or a is equal to g upon tan theta plus m upon m cot theta. So friends, we have seen that with the help of law of conservation of energy, we can easily find out the acceleration of the wedge. So this method is very easy compared to the Newton's laws of motion because in Newton's laws of motion, we have to draw the free body diagram. Dear friends, in next session I will be discussing few more interesting problems based on Newton's law of motion. Thank you for watching.